is Zenial Gamer back with part two of the Rune Evaluation series. Okay, so now that we've talked about efficiency, and just a reminder, efficiency is a way to quickly measure the stats on the rune. It's not the only determining factor. Let's talk about how we're gonna prioritize the actual roles that can be on our runes. So I've got a list up here. Uh, this is, obviously there is, I don't think it's possible guys to make one universal list because there are a lot of other factors. For example, rage runes, fatal runes, different rune sets. Um, and we're gonna talk about those later in this video to the best we can. So there are so many factors. There's probably no one universal guide that could be made. And even if we did make one universal guide, finding your exact rune in that guide would be a full-time job. So instead, I wanna talk from kind of a higher level about how we prioritize things. You all know speed is the most important thing in the game, and this is coming from me, the dude who is so stubborn in RTA that he could build a 350 Ethna and he wouldn't ruin a speed lead. Speed is still the most important stat in the game. It's a turn-based game. The person who goes first will almost always have the advantage. So that is the most important stat. Beyond that, in the current meta, in the current version of the game, with the way artifacts are and with everything else, I would still argue that HP is the second most important stat. However, I wouldn't say that HP is the most important stat on a fast rune, and this is where things get complicated. HP is the most important stat because, or is the second most important stat because most of your runes don't have 32 speed. Which means you can't always take turn one, and when you don't take turn one, you need that HP to take turn two. Now, after HP and after speed, I would say that crit rate is probably the third most important thing because you can make up crit damage through artifacts, but you can't make up crit rate through artifacts. And obviously I use a lot of crit rate runes. I've done plenty of videos on it, but not every monster can go on a crit rate rune for various reasons. So having multi-role crit rate runes, especially when those runes have speed with them is really valuable. Now, the ideal is that you're gonna stack the crit rate in three or more rolls, and then the rest of the rune is fully grindable. So for example, 18 speed, 18 crit rate with HP and attack is the dream rune for slot one, uh, or maybe the second dream behind 30 speed, obviously. But yeah, so if you don't have a quad roll in speed, then getting that really high crit rate roll is really valuable. Now after that, I would put attack percent, and then guys, you're reading this right. For those of you who have watched my channel for a long time, yes, I, defense is below accuracy. Defense is below accuracy. I'll talk about that in a minute. But so after crit rate, I would go with attack percent because virtually all monsters, even those that scale, like Vigor scales to HP, even those that scale to other stats, they still scale half to attack. So Theomar still scales to speed, but also attack. Vigor scales to HP, but also attack. And so the attack does have a lot of value still, and it has more defense, more value than defense, and here's why. Because defense in Summoner's War gives diminishing returns. The higher your defense is, the less actual value that you get from that defense in terms of damage reduction, to a point. So every monster that you rune that's meant to be a bruiser turn two at a certain point in the game, whether that's, um, you know, Guardian 1 Siege or C1 RTA, but at a certain point in the game, when you're reaching like late mid game and beyond, the target baseline is going to be about a thousand defense. Now, there's a few exceptions. Obviously, any monster you're building on Rage that's never meant to be hit, for example, doesn't need any defense at all. Or Swift, you know, any monster, just any monster that's designed not to be hit doesn't need defense. Um, monsters like Perna that revive don't need defense. But as a general rule, a thousand defense is the target. And the reason for that is because that's the first tier at which defense begins to drop off. Hey guys, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Infinity Kingdom. I've been playing Infinity Kingdom for a couple of months now, and I honestly love it. Infinity Kingdom is a cartoon style MMO where you collect immortals, each of whom is created in the likeness of a famous person from history, such as Julius Caesar or King Arthur, and they lead your armies in a variety of PvE and PvP activities. You can see some of my own gameplay on the screen behind me right now. Infinity Kingdom does an amazing job of blending elements together from many of the games I've played and loved throughout the years. It includes things like city building, interaction between the elements, equipment farming, grinding, and of course, summoning. I've been really lucky with my own summons. In the first video I did on Infinity Kingdom, I summoned the best holy immortal in the game, Gilgamesh. But my favorite immortal actually remains King Arthur. It's not that he's OP. I mean, he is. He's really, really strong. 
But he's not the strongest immortal I have, it's just that I've always been fascinated by the Arturian legends, and being able to have King Arthur lead my own armies in a game I'm playing as I attack other players is just cool, guys. I'm telling you guys the absolute truth when I tell you that Infinity Kingdom has become the first game, actually the first app overall that I open up every morning, and it's usually the last game and the last app that I'm using every night. So I invite you all to give it a try. Now you guys know the deal. Use the link in the video description down below and use the promo code that you see up on screen, the word Zenial. When you use that promo code, you get three Philosopher's Stones, which is three premium summons. You get a chance to summon your own favorite immortal throughout history. And you're also supporting the channel and the content that I create by supporting the sponsors of the channel. So guys, again, I invite you to try out the game. I know you'll enjoy it. And the way I know you'll enjoy it is because I enjoy it. From there, it actually begins to drop off further at 1200. Now that doesn't mean there's never a monster that needs to go over 1200. A monster that's a pure support, not meant to do any damage. Every bit of survivability we can give to them matters. So a monster like Lulu is gonna be awesome if you can stack on tons and tons of defense and HP. And then of course there's defense scaling monsters like Fang and Tyrannus, but there are more HP scaling monsters in the meta and probably more HP scaling monsters overall than defense scaling monsters. And for that reason, we just don't need as many runes that are stacked with tons of defense. So you'll get obviously a lot of value out of those high roll defense runes you have, but you just don't need as many of them. And that's why I prioritize it lower. From there, I would go with a multi-roll crit damage rune. Yeah, again, this is me, Mr. 130 crit damage. But again, if you have a lot of crit rate runes in particular, if you get 21 crit damage on a rune, along with like HP, attack, and speed. So let's say you get a slot one, that's like HP, attack, and speed, all with good rolls, all grindable, along with a max double roll crit damage, or better, a max triple roll crit damage, like 28. Um, or 20, even a high triple roll like 25, something like that. The efficiency is awesome and it synergizes beautifully with a crit rate rune because not only do you not need the crit rate as much when you're using a crit rate rune and you can't get a fourth grindable stat on the slot one, but you get greater proportional return when you have crit damage rolled into runes that go on a monster with crit rate. So think about it, uh, if you have you know, 50 crit damage from towers, um, like yield towers and whatever, 50 crit damage base, and you add 20 crit damage from a rune, that's an additional 20% crit damage before getting into skill ups and trying to use, you know, trying to keep it real simple here. Whereas if you put an extra 20 crit damage on your Lucian, who already had 250, you've only added 7% more crit damage. Now the net damage gain is pretty much the same, the way the math works, but the proportional damage, which means the benefit or the min-maxing that you're doing within your build is significantly higher because it's not like you're adding crit damage and nothing else. All those other rolls that didn't go into crit rate or crit damage by using the crit rate rune went into other stats. So that's the modern bruiser, basically. When I say modern, the current meta is by min-maxing all the stats and then taking advantage of the greatest efficiencies where you can. So something like a slot one with a triple roll crit damage is amazing. Now from there, I would go to a double roll crit rate and then underneath that, I would probably put um, everything else is about equal. So that's why there's nothing else on the list. Like resistance does have value, it's limited, it's, it's low and we'll talk about that later. But resistance does have value. Again, going to the Lulus or the Rileys or other supports, there's definitely value in getting resistance there, but usually speaking, they need high rolls, multi rolls of resistance on the runes to reach 100 without using a resistance slot six. So like a random seven resistance roll, I usually just gem that off for flat HP and find more value in it. But a multi roll, especially a high multi roll does have value. Same thing for a single roll of crit rate, as long as the other rolls are really good, a single roll of crit rate has value. Most of the time you're trying to reach 85 crit rate or higher on a monster, a single six is not enough, but there are places getting a monster on a crit rate rune up to 100, for example, the single six can be helpful. So those rolls all have their places, but they don't reach the priority list. Now from there, I wanna point out that you need to adjust your valuation of stats by set. So, for example, I've talked about Rage or Fatal several times already because it's a really obvious and easy example. Rage runes, Fatal runes, uh, but more so Rage. Uh, you're basically using that for PvE and then for pure nukers. That's your Lucians and stuff like that. And if you have some good fast Rage runes, you can do fast builds like a Kali or an Odin that's tuned to a vast stat. 
Um, sometimes those go on Swift. Um, Violent is usually preferable, at least for the Odin. But if you have a really fast Rage set that also has OP subs, it can work. For the most part, though, most of the Rage builds you do, you don't care about HP and defense and so on. But what about other sets? I've talked about Rage a lot. What about other sets? Well, Swift, for example. Swift, to me, is exactly like Rage, except that it also needs speed and accuracy. Now, the accuracy is negotiable. Um, depending on the Swift monster, a Swift Lucian doesn't need accuracy. A Swift Poseidon definitely does. So having accuracy on the runes is valuable, but if I'm looking at Swift, HP and defense have no value whatsoever. If I am putting a monster on Swift, it's because that monster is taking turn one and if it gets hit, it's gonna die. Most of the time, I mean, there's some efficiency builds you can make for like PVE, but you would never put, you would never do like an efficiency Swift build, or you, I, I won't say never, you would very rarely, uh, especially later in the game, do an efficiency build on Swift because you're just giving up too much opportunity to proc or despair stun or something else, and then you're not trying to take turn one. So for the most part, Swift Runes, what we care about is attack, crit rate, crit damage, just like Rage and Fatal, but they also need to have a lot of speed and accuracy, which makes them harder to farm. Um, and as a result, a lot of times what you'll give up there is the crit damage to a certain extent. Uh, you wanna give up as little of it as you can, obviously, but that's the one that kind of falls by the wayside. Other runes, like Energy and Guard, you're very rarely going to use these runes. Uh, however, they can work in Shield Will builds. So Shield Will plus one, also in the current meta, there's a lot of Destroy, and you can get away with something like Destroy Will Energy, obviously not on defense. For offense, it's going to be better Double Destroy or Double Revenge in some cases. But if you lack in those runes, and depending on the level of Siege play that you're at, you can definitely get away with stuff like Shield Will Guard, Shield Will Energy, um, will destroy energy because not every monster on the team has to have shield and actually since Orion's buff the shield tends to be less valuable anyway the shield play was mostly something to manipulate the Orion AI still worth having one shield set but for all of those other offsets I would recommend prioritizing the stats that make sense on the set so guard gives you additional defense percent as such defense would be the highest value of anything other than speed that i would value on a guard room that's also going to make it easier to build or improve your tricaru for energy most of the time you're using energy it's probably to get a monster to as high of hp as possible something like putting it on a scoville right at which point HP makes more sense. So that would be my priority again after speed. So for each set, I would say think about how and where you would use the monsters and which stat makes the most sense for that set and then prioritize that stat for that set. Now this doesn't affect the actual efficiency formula, but it affects what I would consider like an effective efficiency formula. So if we think about the stat priority list right here, if you have a rune that has, let's say, lots of crit rate, crit damage, and attack plus resistance, and maybe the rune says it's 100% efficiency, but the two rolls into resistance literally do nothing for you on that rune. Attack, crit rate, crit damage, that's going on a turn one nuker, because especially because there's no HP and no defense. Resistance is meant for a monster that's going to get hit, and with no HP and no defense, that rune is not going on a monster that's going to get hit. So the rune may be 100% efficiency by the formula, but... If it has a stat that has no value, then the effective efficiency or the synergized efficiency, whatever you want to say, the, the actual stats that are being used valuably and effectively on your monster are probably 86%. And so that is what I mean when I say adjust value by set. Figure out which stats do and don't make sense for that set. Resistance makes no sense on Fatal Rage or for the most part Swift, other than maybe occasionally a Bastet or something that could be outsped and, and it's worth having them on resistance, but for the most part, it, less value there. You also want to adjust your value by slot. So guys, that's it for part two of the Rune Evaluation Series. Now, just a reminder one more time, if you enjoy the content, please remember to smash the like button, drop a comment, and help motivate me to keep putting out content. As always, guys, really hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in part three tomorrow.